Yeah. So what is data visualization? So it sounds really dry and boring. So I made it really, really exciting. So that's my problem is I can't read that stuff. It's in the middle. Data visualization is the graphic representation of data, right? It involves producing images that communicate relationships between the representation of data to viewers of the images. I think that's what it is because I'm losing some of the text. Yeah, it's close. Yeah. Uh, this communication is achieved through the use of a systematic mapping between graphic marks and data values in the, can't read it, of the visualization, the content. And the creation of the visualization. Yeah. The creation of the visualization. As I said, it's like it's blocking my text. So that sounds like extremely dry and boring, but we are addicted to data. Everybody's measuring time, uh, checking out the temperature on their apps, on their iPhones, on their uh, Apple the watches, they have Fitbits, everybody's collecting data and we're addicted to it, right? So the thing is, you can make numbers say anything you want. I am not going to read that, but basically that's what it is. Any poll, any you know, uh, uh, survey out there, they are just basically full of crap. So 87 of survey results are made on the fly. And 100% of the number above is totally like real. Yeah, oh yeah, totally. So, what I'm saying is like it's, it can be completely fabricated, right? The proof is, if you look at the graphic on the left, just a little highlight of the yellow frame there, and then the one that the turquoise below, it's just you see the difference between the, the blue line there that, that I'm pointing out with the arrow, is it's my motivation to, to go to the gym if there's a possibility of a freshly baked butter croissant afterwards. And, you know, it kind of flattens out because there's only a juice bar nearby, right? So. This is within 30 seconds of excitement and down. As I said, this is a completely fake, you know, made up number and data, but it looks like it could be the real thing. So how do you make data so pretty? Even your mom will want to meet it, you ask. Visual hierarchy. So visual hierarchy refers to arrangement and representation of elements in a way that implies importance. In other words, visual hierarchy influences the I wish I could move that strip. I can't read it. <laughs> Visual hierarchy refers to the arrangement or presentation of elements in the way that implies importance. In other words, visual hierarchy influences the order in which the human eye perceives what it sees. The order is created by visual contrast between forms in a field of perception. And then there's a ton of text below there. So what happens is you definitely read this first. You know that's mm -hmm. the secret. Then this, and maybe that. Maybe that. Yep. And what the hell, right? So you're not going to read that stuff. So in all of your layouts and your design, this is how it functions. Right? The stuff that is the least important, you make it the smallest at the bottom, basically. So there's some Tinder-worthy infographic examples right there. So hashtag caution, hashtag hot stuff, hashtag feast your eyes. Get ready. Oh, yeah. So there's my Tinder profile right there. So people who think I'm attractive, uh, my mom, and my mom. So this is a, uh, unfortunately, the students in the classroom, they have that strip right in the middle, but basically it's, uh, you know, it's a, that's a basic uh, pie graph straight from Excel, right? So Tinder profile, non-judgmental, non single infographic. So here again, unfortunately, the students in the classroom, there's only a 9% right there. So it's a single data entry right there and you make a graphic out of that and you made a poster out of this. Seeking no nonsense relationship, Pay attention to the simplicity of those layouts, right? Grid-based, big numbers, very simple, easy to read, right? Something very, very nonsensical, you know, easy, right? Mm -hmm. With a sexy typography, it's like, oh, this is, this is very sexy right there, you know? A beautiful um, uh, serif uh, typeface with some sans serif. Again, hierarchy, big numbers, nuggets of information that you can read, right? And compressed uh, sans serif typefaces, you know, really good little graphics that really support the information. The one, the, the double spread on the right hand side is an area map and, and graph maps are just, and it's just the layout is absolutely just lovely, right? It's a four column layout, right? And grade colors, of course, right? So the spread above is a single color, it's just red. The one below is using a metallic ink, right? It's a bronze, I think, and then some red, some black, 
and the knockout, the white and the knockout. Again, two colors only on the left-hand side, right? The dark gray and the turquoise. So it's a very, very simple, very minimalistic approach. On the right-hand side, there's a little bit more to it, and it's the uh, history of the uh, iPod. Who likes good conversations? So there's lots here to talk about, right? There's you know, pie graphs, bar charts, you know, error graphs, et cetera, et cetera. So lots to talk about, you know, very, very, um, very dense, but very easy to approach. Again, lots of, lots of information, lots of data here, and very, very cool representation of a timeline on the left-hand side that curls around. Right side. You have all the basics, you know, pie graphs, bar graphs, et cetera, line graphs, et cetera. All that stuff is very, very simple. But look how it's organized and how much space there is. And again, the visual hierarchy, right? Big numbers, smaller numbers, you know, and as you get further down into the, the, the bottom at the very bottom, it's just, there's your source. You, know, you can't barely read that because it's not important. It's the legal aspect. <clears throat> of course, I, you know, you have to enjoy all type of arts, right? So this is, these are graphics that are, you know, uh, art gallery worthy because they're so nicely done. Um, so not... All graphics can measure positive things. The one on the left-hand side is the reduction of green areas and the impact on deterioration of quality of life uh, somewhere in the Spanish-speaking Spanish country. So it can be also very, a very negative uh, aspect of those, but they're just organized in such a beautiful manner, right? So, and of course, you don't have to use just graphics. On the left-hand side, it's a Photoshop trick, right? To make it look like it's all tattooed up, but they're all you know, data-based graphics about, you know, people's choices in, in, uh, in tattoos and how many tattoos people have and if they regret it or not, and et cetera, et cetera, right? And it's done in Photoshop. The one on the right-hand side speaks, probably it's in German. I'm not sure. It's hard to tell. I don't speak German, but it's probably something about, you know, I don't know, maybe something about the daycare, you know, like might as well use crayons to create a graph out of it. So this is photographic stuff. So it's, it's a different approach to a, um, to a basic, uh, you know, graphic you could do in Illustrator. Instead, you know, step outside of the box, right? And think, think differently. Uh, of course, fan of team sports. Um, there's Kobe Bryant's in number, his life in number, hitting 30,000 points. Um, on the right hand side is another really cool little graphic so you can bring illustrations as well as photographs as well as you know uh, silhouettes and graphics and representation on, on a lot of you know a lot of data in a very cool way so this one is very very long and, and tall is environmentally conscious of course a simple bar graph on the left hand side if you add a texture to it or a pattern and then you grow it out then it becomes really exciting to look at right otherwise it would be just like you know an excel document and it would be boring as hell on the right hand side it's an advertisement so it's custom designed custom made with pieces of fruit to make it look like a bar graph right how about some 3d software to create you know a fake farm environment with cows and sheep and you know, and, and everything. So the one on the left hand side there is repeated on the upper right. It's the exact same data, but slightly different graphics, right? So there's some right there. It's a, you know, for a fertilizing company, uh, you know, an agricultural company, whatever. This would be really cool to do. And mechanically inclined, of course. So this particular graphic right there is actually a timeline and it's very, very tall and vertical. And I had to cut it into two pieces but it's basically the history of the uh, internal combustion combustion engine from 1807 uh, to you know basically 2000 all the way to the modern rotary engine and it's a it's a very very cool uh, two color only uh, representation of a, of a historic timeline so again hierarchy right of course you gotta love books love printed books if you look at the bottom one and the right hand side one, they are three color prints. There's a green and a yellow and a black. And then the one on the right is a, you know, what is it? A purple, black, and blue. Teal, purple, and a black, right? So what you can do with only two or three colors. I want the respawn. Of course, this is a, a good use of those uh, abandoned uh, shopping trolleys. You, know, you just chop it in half and then you make an infographic out of it. So this is, again, probably the people's 
um, budgets uh, on how what they spend their money on on a, on a monthly basis or whatever it's in euros and it's in German but again it's a it's an infographic uh, photographic based right so this is definitely a custom based custom completely custom made I mean um, graphic fashion same thing again it's it's been sewn together to make it look like a graphic but it's a really really cool idea cool representation on how much we spend or whatever it is on clothing traveling as soon as you bring a map into an infographic then you have you have something else like you have some different data you have different languages you have a timeline you have time zones etc etc so lots of representations of, of maps so the one on the bottom left is just dots so it's becoming more iconic than an actual map and the one on the right hand side is seen as if it was from the uh, the north pole so the, the your map presentation your map representation is not the classic you know north america on the on the left europe in the center and asia on the on the on the right side of it the map can be turned upside down if you need to right again it's it says different things it can be a history buff of course all of those are creative routines from very famous people from beethoven to charles dickens to benjamin franklin and etc so they had uh, some kind of creative routine for every day, what they were doing. And, and as I said, everything is quantifiable, right? Even, even your daily routine, if you keep a track on, of everything, right? And if you like nerdy stuff, this is, this is for you right there. Speed comparison on the left-hand side is very Star Trek-y looking. And then on the right-hand side, it's a beautiful, so simple representation of, uh, of the Apollo, uh, where I think it's Apollo 13 trip to the moon and back and how uh, how it works around the um, the earth and the uh, and the moon and it's just like a, the representation is just absolutely gorgeous it looks like um, it's, it's like artwork you know more nerdy stuff right it can be 3d looking on the left hand side and it looks really like planetary looking thing but it not necessarily is and then of course you know all that data visualization is all about numbers and again on the right hand side it's a two color print you get the very light gray and the pink, and that's it. To the profile, who can quantify? Because this is what it's all about. You quantify things. You vis you represent visually numbers and quantities and data, and that's all it's all about. So here, you have both graphics and hierarchy of you know like those nuggets of big numbers, like 13 years old, 17, worker, 11, all those numbers and text really represent the, uh, the data in a, in a totally different uh, different approach as well. Food, again, quantifying everything, you know, from veggies, meat, what you eat, etc. So it's kind of like following the same, those two work side by side. They have the same layout and they yet they represent totally different things, right? And again, two color print on the left, two color print on the right hand side. My healthy eating habits, because after all, you know, it is a, it is a Tinder profile, so I'm not going to comment on that, but there's a, you know, one on the left for women and one on the right for men. And remember to, uh, to eat your veggies. And this is a, a graphics uh, from a German magazine um, about masturbation, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> so one last thing about uh, false advert, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, Tinder profiles is... Um, there's a profile picture and this is a real life. Uh, so no Photoshop was harmed in the making of this profile. Remember, uh, what you see is not necessarily what you get. Thanks for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> <laughs>